everybody! Welcome to Koi Channel, and thanks for joining us for the next episode. We will be taking a close look at this loose matrix with tiny marine fossils dating back 35 million years, Eocene period. The sample was collected at the turn of the century on the banks of Brazos River in glorious state of Texas. This river is considered to be the state's longest river. It can run fast after the heavy rains and wash away dirt to uncover the deposits of earlier times, when the territory was still under the sea. The locality is known as Stone City and often called Whiskey Bridge. It was first mentioned in the early 19th century and has been visited by scientists, geology students, and amateur fossil hunters alike for over a hundred years. Approximately 250 species of animals have been identified. I do not know how diverse our finds will be, but hopefully we will see a dozen or so species. Apart from abundant gastropods, shark teeth, octopus beaks, and fish vertebrae were reported. Let's see how lucky we are. The preservation is remarkable, although long tube-like shells are often broken. Shells like this one are called dentalium. Modern-day species of genus dentalium were used by Native Americans as currency, similar to kari shells. This dress was made of dentalium shells and probably belonged to a wealthy woman. Plenty of shells have signs of predation. For instance, neatly drilled holes made by natissid gastropods, or broken shells that have been repaired by a mollusk that survived the attack by a crab with a mighty claw. This is one of the hypotheses, anyway. It could be a fish, like a bat ray, or any other animal capable of crushing the shells. Dentaliums are often called tusk shells. They live submerged into the mud with only a tip sticking out. This so-called posterior end is being used both for breathing and for getting rid of waste. The fresh water is brought into the shell by tiny hair-like cilia. And once the oxygen in that water is used up, the water gets pushed out by the contracting action of the mollusk's foot. The presence of the species from marine environment on the land is a classic example of how fossils help scientists to figure out what was happening long before written history, or even before the appearance of humans. To be specific, finding saltwater species in the place that is many miles away from the current coastline means that the Gulf of Mexico likely extended to this spot. What I personally learned looking at these miniature shells is that the most critical part when you study microfossils is not to sneeze. This tubular shell is similar to dentalium and belongs to the same group of mollusks called scapopods. However, part of the shell has a bump, kind of inflated part of a tube. So we assigned it to Catalus species. Adult scapopods can be either female or male individuals. The sediment was wet after soaking in the water of the Brazos River. The wet shells were very brittle and fragile. However, after the chunks of fossilized mud were let to dry, they disintegrated and, most importantly, dry shells hardened. The layers of sediment with marine shells in it are dark. The reason is that the sediment originally contained plenty of organic matter rich in carbon. It resembles the coal, which is almost pure carbon. In our case, the carbon was much less concentrated, and it was mixed with sand and other particles. It is thought that the fine sand present in the samples comes from a nearby river delta. The fossils were deposited at the bottom of a shallow sea, which was deep enough to minimize the effect of storms and currents, but not too deep because horn corals were symbiotic and needed light for photosynthesis, which was performed by single-celled algae that lived in these solitary corals. According to internet sources, the depth 
was 30 to 50 feet below the sea's surface. Also, the shells were deposited in fine, grained material, which, in addition to the absence of turbulence in the water, was the main reason why the fossils are often in pristine condition. For these fossils, being buried in soft mudstone made a huge difference in the preservation when compared to being laid to rest in the sandstone with larger particles and more chances to be grinded. Sorry that the video is a bit long, but I did not want to cut much to give you a feeling of doing it for real. Plus, there is a lot of material to search through, and interesting stuff is not always concentrated, of course. Here's another shell with a hole made by a predatory gastropod. This looks like a Ratusa species, with minute, elongated shells. These mollusks are known as mud dwellers and feed on foraminifera. Statistical analysis done by scientists has shown that around 10 to 15 percent of shells from this locality have signs of predation. Thanks a bunch for watching, and if you like this video, then thanks for your support. This is what keeps us running and inspires us for new uploads. Every one of your likes matters and gives us confidence to continue. At higher magnification, you can also notice tiny elongated pellets, which are probably produced by marine annelid worms, also known as bristle worms or polychaetes. The greenish sediment the pellets are usually found in is called glauconite. Glauconite can be used as a slow release fertilizer by farmers due to its composition that includes potassium, iron, and magnesium. It was also grinded into a powder by a European artist to make the oil paint. Subscribe to watch our next video where we will explore the different ways of taking pictures and videos of enigmatic microfossils called conodonts and learn what worked the best. Also, feel free to ask questions or leave a comment especially if you have interesting information about Whiskey Bridge locality. Perhaps you visited it in the past or maybe planning to go there. Good luck on your trips and stay safe. See ya!